Hostility and tensions between Russia and Ukraine began back in 2014 when Russia annexed Crimea. The annexation was widely condemned by the international community, with the US and EU imposing economic sanctions on Russia in response. We are against the conflict. We are for dialogue and diplomacy. What's this conflict all about? And what does the future look like, especially for India? These are the core questions. Hello and welcome to The Core Questions. What's the Russia-Ukraine war all about? The complication starts right here because the Russia-Ukraine fight is complex with no single cause or explanation. While some experts argue that the conflict has deeper roots and is part of a larger geopolitical struggle between Russia and the West, other factors that may have contributed to current tensions include economic and political instability in Ukraine and long-standing cultural linguistic divisions within the country as well. In addition to the recent violence in Ukraine, the conflict has also seen an increase in tensions between Russia and the West. In April of 2021, America accused Russia of amassing troops near the border with Ukraine, leading to worrying concerns about a potential world war. Fortunately, the situation has since de-escalated, but the tensions between Russia and the West remain high due to the ongoing conflict for several reasons. One major factor is a badly hit Ukraine. With GDP growth stagnating, Ukraine's financial system has been impacted, and not in a good way. According to the World Bank, Ukraine's GDP growth rate went into the negative from a plus 2.3% in 2013 to a negative 9.8% within just two years in 2015. Furthermore, substantial depreciation of Ukraine's currency only exacerbated the problem. The Rivnia lost more than 50% of its value against the US dollar in just one year between 2014 and 2015. Due to this uncertainty and instability, many businesses and investors are unsurprisingly flat out avoiding conducting business in Ukraine, which has further disrupted commerce and investment in the country. The International Monetary Fund, or IMF, reports that the conflict caused a big fall in foreign direct investment in Ukraine from 7.8 billion US dollars in 2013 to just 2.6 billion in 2015. Similarly, the energy industry has also taken a hit globally by the Russia-Ukraine conflict. For one thing, on-ground violence has interrupted the flow of gas through Ukraine, which is a vital transit country for natural gas to get from Russia to Europe. Consequently, Europe has been facing a lack of supply, higher prices, and a greater forced dependence on alternative energy sources. According to the EU, this was a big drop in natural gas imports from Russia via Ukraine from 162 billion cubic meters in 2008 to just 81 billion cubic meters in 2015. Geopolitically speaking, the Ukraine crisis has strained ties between Russia and the West, with each side accusing the other of interfering in the conflict. As a result, Russia has been subject to economic sanctions and other punitive actions, which has increased tensions between Russia and the West. Here's why this is important. While India has traditionally had positive relationships with both Russia and Ukraine, this conflict makes it extremely difficult for India to maintain a neutral stand. Though India has remained impartial so far, it has had to separately balance relations with both Russia and Ukraine, an extremely delicate situation. And let's not forget about our foreign policy, which has gotten complicated as well due to this conflict. What those positions state is that we are against the conflict, we are for dialogue and diplomacy. Uh, we are for uh, urgent cessation of violence. Uh, and we are prepared to contribute in whatever way to these objectives. India has historically maintained a non-alignment policy, and the crisis in Ukraine makes it difficult for India to maintain a impartial stance. Additionally, regional trade and investment has been massively disrupted. According to the Indian Embassy in Ukraine, the fighting caused the two countries' bilateral trade to decrease by almost half, from 2.2 billion US dollars in 2013 to 1.6 billion within just two years. In actuality, Western nations, including America, have strategic interests in supporting Ukraine. Because of this, they have attempted to malign India, especially in mainstream media, and paint an inaccurate picture because we import Russian oil. But Oil Minister Hardeep Singh Puri and External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar have exposed these glaring hypocritical allegations towards India by the West. The oil import in European Union is like six times what India has imported. 
gases infinity times because we don't import. Jay Shankar continued, it's a sensible policy to go where we get the best deal in the interests of the Indian people, and that is exactly what we're trying to do. So what does the future look like, especially in India? Well, it's likely that the conflict's effects will continue to be felt by the world in some way or the other for some time to come. And the region's power dynamics may also change the status quo in the entire Asia-Pacific region. As for these geopolitical implications, we'll have to keep waiting and watching to see how the conflict pans out. But the good news is that so far, the India first stand maintained by our government leaders have voted us extremely well. In fact, Russia became the third largest oil supplier to India in 2022, making up about 15% of total purchases, dragging down OPEC's share to the lowest in more than a decade. In fact, the US has gone one step further and stated that India is free to keep buying oil from Russia as long as it doesn't use Western shipping and financial services to transport it. According to the Army Chief, General Manoj Pandey, the biggest lesson for India from the Russia-Ukraine war is that India cannot depend on others for its national security. This is a push for India's Atma Nirbhar Bharat. In addition to this, India showcased only made-in-India weaponry at this year's Republic Day Parade, a first for the country. Thanks for watching the core questions by The Times of India. Like and share this video and leave your comments below. Until next time, this is Priyanka Deo signing off. Namaste.